Okay, my friends, one of my favorite channels, the Royal Institution London. These are the top people in in um, everything in science, basically. It, that's what they claim. Now, I dispute most of the things they say because I am an alternative researcher, but I come with proof. I'm going to show you what he says is just wrong. Listen. Davies, and I'm director of something called the Beyond Center, for fundamental concepts in science at Arizona State University. And we tackle the big questions of existence, things like what happened before the Big Bang and how did life begin and is uh, time travel possible? And one of the biggest questions that we can ask is, are we alone in the universe? During my career, the opinion on that has swung back and forth. So when I was a student uh, here in London, the prevailing view was that life is so stupendously complex and so very special that it could only have arisen once in the universe. It must have been a dream run of chemical reactions that turned non-life into life. Uh, this is uh, so improbable that even given the vastness of the universe out there, the chances of it happening again somewhere else were infinitesimal. But now, uh, today, it's fashionable to say that the universe is teeming with life. And the curious thing is that we have no evidence one way or the other. And so the search for life beyond Earth really divides into two extremes. One of these is just looking for microbes, for example, on... All right, this is when it just gets nonsense, because we have every... I have the evidence, and I can show the evidence, and they refuse to engage with the evidence. That's the problem. It's not that the evidence doesn't exist. Okay, my friends, this is going to be kind of serious. As everybody knows that's been following me at, to any degree at all, I claim that literally everything is biology, even our moons and our planet, and literally everything. And this is a tendon emphasis in the body of a creature, and this is the stalk that implants it, and this is the anchor, and that stalk pulls a tendon and a muscle. This is the same thing here. And inside these balls, there is a structure that locks that into the body. This is the same thing here. These little, little, little creases and things, that's these things here. They're right there. Those aren't impact craters. And that is not an impact crater either. That is where the fiber attaches. It's called an abrupt transition. And the same thing happened here. And these are anchors in living creatures. Now, this became a lot more serious than I thought it was going to. Okay, I would ask the good professor to get somebody in the biology department, the anatomy department, and have them take a look at this and t tell me what they see there. When they look at these little stripes coming off here, what, what, do, these, whoops, what do these mean? Why are they so striped out. And what is this circle here with these little pinchy bundles? What is that all about? And what about the chemistry? And I have all that. I, I followed this very, very closely. Spectral, spectral analysis of uh, Romeo and Juliet, I think it was the two different particles they had up there. They tested. And it's, they're all biological. They know this. They just don't know what to say about it. And these little pock marks here, they don't give off any gases. But there's holes in here that give off gases like crazy. And I know why. Because this is biology. And the gas holes that are coming out are arteries and veins. See, this goes, this goes back to February 2015. You see these little spiky things all around here? That's where this ball anchored into some creature's body. I'm telling you, it's just a fact. This shooting out here, you know what that is? Those are hydrocarbon, methanes, gases from blood down that's in here that's boiling from the sun hitting it exactly at the right angle. That is an artery. That's why it's so hugely powerful coming out of here. These are little tiny blood vessels that service. The, everything has to be serviced with blood. And you see some of them coming this way, that way, that way. Everything has to be serviced with blood. When the sun hits it just the right way, they cook off. And just like on here on Earth. And they know this exact same gases. <laughs> They're exactly like a barbecue gas grill. No difference except there's not enough oxygen to combust. You see that? That's up on 67P. You see all those little dots? Those are all the little blood vessels. Those are balls of blood, literally. They call them dragon balls. Well, when the sun hits them just the right way, 
they literally cook off of there. They smoke off. That's why you get these different, like, this will shoot straight out of here. If the sun hits it just the right way, whew, straight out. All right, there's Raleigh, North Carolina. That's the size of this thing. And th I'm telling you, that it looks to me like it's an Achilles tendon running up to the muscle that would have surrounded a bone coming straight up. I cannot account for this, but I'm going to tell you right now, Mars is also biological, as is Earth. I've been showing this over and over and over. And people have been hiding from these facts. They're literally hiding. You see that? These are the tendon straps that run up from the ball up to anchor to the muscle, which is broken off at where the muscle would have started. Once again, this is the tendon, and it, up here it was where the muscle would have started. There, are, These are basically an abrupt transition. That's another little spiky piece that came off that goes to somewhere. I don't know exactly where. And that is the ball. Let me show you the anatomical. All right, this is what we're seeing out there in common 67P. The ball is like this, and then it transitions from the ball where it anchors into the fibers that go out and... and attached to the muscle and there's a, 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 a well, I call it an abrupt transition in between where the fibers come up and then they hit the muscle and that's where it breaks and then of course the bone is in the middle all right I think I showed you the anatomical they're all basically the same but some of them have different interiors and some of them have shells and some of them have cross hatches and different they're different styles but they all have a strap that attaches to them and they all have an abrupt transition where they they just change and that's normally where it breaks right here now let me show you comet 67p all right at one point i showed you a little round ball and there was like these little pinchy bundles those are these pinchy bundles and these are the same stripes that you find coming up on 67p now watch as i move down this stripe you see these you see that right there it, break, it stops right here, and then this one is right here. It's a step down a little bit. These are the tendon fibers. They have to move back and forth, and they were normally in a slurpee, which is small, leucine-rich proteins, a membrane that surrounded them. That's pretty much eroded away. Now, what I'm going to do is bring you down a little further. Here we are in the same... You see the little white stuff? That's what's called mineralization. Okay? You see how perfect this shot is now? That is the same stone as the pregnant lady stone. They didn't chop anything. They had slits that came right down them, and they break right off flat as a pancake. They are square blocks. They have all of this pigmentation, uh, not pigmentation, but um, membrane all over them. And the pregnant lady stone is covered with moss and all kinds of of um, growth because this is nothing but body tissue and and moss and lichen and all that stuff loves this now this is the glue so here's the tendon and those run up the side of 67 p and they break off where the muscle starts because the muscle's weak um, on both sides there's a side one side and the other side now this is the glue and we're going to come up past that glue we're moving up through the glue and i'm just going to let my camera roll here that glue attaches to the now right up here you see what you're going to see swirls come through right here this is where the muscle attaches to the glue and that is literally the muscle coming out of the glue and then we see the mineralization and then you're going to see a little holes here and there in that which is where it feeds the blood into it let's see I'm trying to focus in on it I'll just let it roll, but this, so this is like five, six, almost seven years ago that I did this, and um, now that's the, that's the first abrupt transition. You see that little spot right there? That's where it will break off, and then there's another abrupt transition as you go a little further out, and then it breaks off at the end all the way complete. These holes in here are there to service this tissue with blood. Remember how we're shooting out little gas um, spikes coming out of them that's where they would come out out of blood vessels and those are blood vessels now we go a little further down here and it ends up breaking off and then you have all of the tissue and now these are the balls these were the, the the tendon anchors out here now you see this these don't shoot off gases where they shoot off gases right around the neck 
these are just like little divots that lock the thing in and this is some more of it and I went through a pretty good guy I have another one here that's almost identical looking to that as a matter of fact I show it right here that's the stuff that's on mine that is a meteorite it's black all you see how it's all blacked out there but it's got <laughs> all this red blood in it and this is the same almost identical to what you see there go see this this right here is literally the exact same thing as that right there you see it come back out here one more time see that that's the one on 67p here's the one in my shop <laughs> and this was a comet I mean a, a meteorite see that basically the same and that whole ball is basically the same ball well I have it right here hold on there it is right here you see that ball that's the ball like 67p and that's the stalk coming up and that came through space I'm almost 100 I, well, anybody can deny that I'd like to have them deny it tell me well, how did that get all blanched off like that that didn't burn up and this was loaded with red blood because blood is in space and it exploded out coming through our atmosphere with the heat and it blew that part off because it was wet this this right here is where the black blood is you see that that was a fingertip you see that little round spot there and a round spot there there was another one over here that's where the tendons lock in this is right down to its structure and I mean right to the structure yeah. and that's where they're and I have a t terrestrial one here that's identical to this only it just well here it is this is exactly the same as that virtually identical even the, the little hook and everything you see the hook right there you see the hook right there <laughs> see Let me back this up a little bit you see better you see that hole right there and that hole right there those are where the veins were same thing here there's one here and one right up in here this side is where the red blood blew out this side here you see that same thing here that's the same thing this is a fingertip this was a fingertip this came through space this did not but when you look at it in the microscope you can see the same structure everything's the same so I'd like to have somebody explain that to me and have them before they go out looking oh we can't find any life in space it's all over the place there's nothing but life so don't forget this is where all of the gases blow out right here where it's going to go run up the little blood vessels to service the muscle that eroded away muscle is very weak it just it just falls apart the tendon totally different story the ball the balls of the enthesis way different story just solid solid hard flexible and tough are those little straps like I showed you and then you get into the muscle and the muscle is just it, it just erodes right away that's why that all that red dust all over. now here's 67 P again you see this those are the anchors that this was in some that's where it locked that ball in and then the fibers come up and then they meet the muscle and that's where it becomes weak and they break you see these spike these little shooting these this is cooking gases there's no gases cooking off of here because there's no real blood in there this is just this is the, the the ball that locks in you can see it's just as glowy here as it here here this is giving off gases because it's it's also being serviced with blood this is like a ball of stone literally it's just it's exactly like that it's just, it's just a stone ball all right it's Kenneth and Juliet same thing <laughs> CH hydrocarbons that's that's methane gases that's what happens when things are cooked and when they're they're deteriorating when they're rotting ferrous oxides that's what blood is all the different ferrous oxides <laughs> sodium silicates hydrogen carbon that is us all right one more time 
no jets, no jets shooting out down here because that's the anchor ball. It's nothing more than an anchor. There's no blood surface in here, basically. This is getting hit, hit by the same sunlight this is, and it's shooting out all these jets. And they're going in the direction of where the blood is feeding it. You see? Right up here is where the, the muscles started to attach and made, to me, this was a leg. Now, my friend from Arizona State University should look around at how the planets grew and how they moved around early on. This is from NASA. I can tell you what, this is all biology. The universe is 100% biology. And they have to start to, to address this or just continue to work and walk around in circles. It's very, very distressing that this has been going on for so long with this kind of evidence behind what I'm saying. All right, they're trying to figure out how the planets grew and how they moved around. This is NASA and the other guy from uh, Arizona State University. Same thing, they're going for the big picture. I go for the big picture too. And these are tendon balls, just like I was showing you. This is how they break right here. And this is a moon, and they have all of them, every one of them has the same thing here. Even our moon has one of these craters that has a little stalk going into the center of it. And that's how they were anchored.